now we'll be moving to our last section for this interview, uh, advice for students and young professionals. So for students who are willing to uh, pursue a career in biostatistics, uh, they might ask how they can prepare for a career in biostatistics. Okay, so you need, you need uh, uh, first to like biostatistics and statistics. Of course, you should have liking, you know, statistics is rigorous and sometimes it's straightforward, but in many times it's not. Uh, so you should have, this is a prerequisite, you like this, you want to become a statistician and talk to people who worked in this field, they can uh, open your eyes to things you don't see now. So basically before 2012, I didn't like statistics and biostatistics because I didn't know what statistics and biostatistics can do. You know, I didn't know that. So if we, if we, we, if we don't know, then we will not like it. If I don't know what I can do with this skill set or these tools in depth, here where the mentor comes in, then you might feel why I should do that. Let me do other things. So uh, basically you should have uh, liking, knowledge, understanding the potential and the, the limitations of the field. Then you should have a mentor. In statistics, you can, I've seen many, many examples where people get lost easily, you know, like because there are tons of courses everywhere and, you know, like a lot of things you can do. So you need a mentor to organize your work towards being a professional statistician or biostatistician in the classes you need to take on the projects, you, the projects you want to work on. So mentorship is important so you don't get lost. Even if you are smart, you might end up taking classes that you don't really need now or you can't use necessarily in a biostatistic context, but maybe in a business context. So you need to know what you want to do and uh, uh, what your advisor can help you in this. So I always wanted mainly to study human subjects. So my unit of analysis is not an oil well, or it's not uh, a soil sample or not. I wanted to study humans, you know, whether I am using psychometric techniques, biostatistic techniques, mainly I learned how to do human subjects. So I was interested in experimental research designs, how to do experiments like clinical trials in medicine or randomized controlled trials in other fields. Like you can do a clinical trial in school, in an association, an organization, in a clinic, like in a clinical setting. So I wanted to learn first when I started how to analyze anything related to human subjects, you know? So this is how I branch it. Then I moved to non-human subjects. When I did the GIS and geostatistics, I moved to analyzing, you know, uh, so aerial units like polygon data, raster data. Uh, this is second, you know, step. So, but I always knew I need to master because my passion is to study people, you know, like whether psychologically or clinically in a clinical setting. So sometimes I think, okay, we need to compare these teaching approaches in schools with kids. We need to do a trial on this. So kids, vulnerable population, how the study should be, how the design should be, what statistical techniques we need to use, how to validate the instrument for testing, how to make it sure it's measuring what it should measure. All of that is something I am interested in. So you should know what you want to analyze first. Like, do you want to analyze, you know, data related to uh, engineering? Like in engineering, most likely you will work with non-human subjects. You might work with oil wells, with values like gas pressure, you know, production like uh, rate, and you, you need to know what you are doing. But when you learn the statistics skill, it becomes really easy to transfer, you know? But for career yeah. purposes, you should have an identity. Who is me as a statistician? Who is me as an analyst? Am I the guy who analyzes the stock market and make forecasting and interrupted time series or time series to tell you that what will happen with this stock? Am I the guy that I will consult like big engineering firms like oil, you know, petroleum engineering firms and tell them what they need to change so they make more, uh, you know, uh, money or they have better production rate or whatever? Or am I the person who will be analyzing like human behavior or human clinical data? This is your career identity. That's what you should focus on. 
Yeah, absolutely. So organization is very important, as you said, and to find a great mentor to uh, guide you uh, to what courses you should take and also the passion, to have passion in biostatistics because without passion, you cannot excel. So uh, for Dr. al uh what has been more valuable in his career? his education or his, his experience? Well, I would say both. I would say both, you know, like education is a prerequisite to get into the field. We all take classes, we all go to schools, you know, you need to do a good job. But really what impacted my life is having a, a, an educational psychologist who is a great statistician. This is evident with the 120 publications she got, very impactful publications. And uh, the plus, I think, 3,000 citations. And her work, she found a solution to everything. This professor was like, I would say, my mentor, my early stage mentor. She told me how to do my education. So, education is not only like important to us. So, we can all now, you know, go do classes in statistics, in mathematics, in uh, whatever we want, but how to do that and what to do. So she kind of gave me the tree. She told me, Hassan, you should first do this and this. Like um, after the intermediate level, you should do the structural equation modeling course. You should do the multi-level, multivariate analysis course and learn M plus, improve your M plus skills here and our programming skills. Uh, you need to do experimental research design and learn how clinical trials are analyzed based on this and this and this. After that, that quasi-experimental methods are very important. So, so what, and she was the first to tell me she had GIS in the plan too. So basically she drew the plan to me, she showed me and she guided me through this, you know, with her experience. I'm, I'm, and Dr. Bernard Bragg was a great influence in drawing this plan. Then I met another like, you know, great people in the uh, spatial analysis. I met Dr. Kanche from University of Pennsylvania. He was on my dissertation as a methodologist. Dr. Gufang Sao at University of Colorado now. So all, I learned from all of them in different ways, you know? So you need people to tell you how you do your education. You don't need people to just, some school take a class and go out. And this is not very productive. Now, professional experience, you tackle the real life problems now. You start to see, oh, in class, I didn't see this problem in logistic regression. The logistic regression model in class, the classification model for data scientists, it is a type of supervised classification, right? So you do it in nice data set in class, you take it very clean, you don't have any problems, you get very nice odd ratios and confidence intervals. But in real life, you start to say, oh, hey, hey, odds ratio are not being computed. What's going on, guys? So you start to learn new things, new approaches. And uh, you know, you start a new journey of education and learning. So both are important, important, but guys, find someone who can tell you what good education is. You know, it's not necessarily just taking classes and going to college, or you need someone to tell you what is good education in college, what is good education outside of college. And of course, your experience, you know, will help you greatly in the market. Your experience matters a lot, as you know. So if you have experience, you, you, I say your hand is dirty in your field, whether you're an engineer, a teacher, a nurse, uh, a journalist, if you're, you did the actual work, that matters a lot. Yes, absolutely. As you said, guidance is very important. And uh, so it's a compromise between uh, your education and your experience. So as a clinical assistant professor and a senior biostatistician, uh, what training courses or extra education do you recommend for young professionals? Well, of course, as I told you, like this is uh, something I can talk about generally now. So there is always something we do. It's called need assessment and assessment and evaluation because this package is personalized for every person, you know? So say now someone who is very strong in mathematics with a great background, they took their calculus from Calc 1 through multivariate calculus and linear algebra, and they did a couple of classes in real analysis. Okay, now here, 
there is a special you know pathway for this person now I, I got another one who got very good practical experience but you know they never done anything academically by the way statistics got two ways the mathematical way you know and the logical reasoning way to do it if you want to be perfect you need to combine both but you can be very great statistician just doing your mathematic guys i worked with a lot of people from that type or like the logical but Part, like the critical thinker, logical person. And there is a great, great statistician who talked about both types. So saying there are many ways to do one thing, you know, what, this is one way, this is another way. So, but of course you should take classes in clinical research. So like research ethics, like these are the general things we share. Like, of course you should take the intro level statistics, the intermediate level statistics. That's a prerequisite to get into this. Uh, you should know about research protocols in, in medicine, for example, because this is a very sensitive setting with very sensitive data, with very like strict procedures. So we have very organized process. You should know about uh, these processes in general. Research, like what is ethical to do? So you're doing clinical trial. You can't do everything you want. You should know what is ethical. You should know the regulations of FDA, for example, about medications and how to navigate these you know, systems of policies and these systems of regulations uh, and so on. So this is something you should know, okay? Uh, you should be very interested in this field, you know, because you know, when you move beyond the intermediate statistics, here where passion plays a role in continuum. A lot of people say, you know what? I feel that's very complicated and I wouldn't need it and uh, I'm dropping. So you should have some passion to work uh, this. Of course, there are a lot of platforms. I think you are all you all know of these platforms, you know, but I would I wouldn't prescribe, you know, uh, a plan unless I know who I'm talking to or you know, know their level career, career goal. So I do what I before advising a student. I do a need analysis first, need analysis, why we want to do this with me. And of course, assessment and evaluation of the level of the student and uh, uh, the uh, you know, knowledge they got before they start what they want. So doctor, where do you see the, the industry going in the future? Uh, okay, Biostat biostatistics is one of the hot areas worldwide. It will be improving. And I, I read a study predicting like more demand and more need for bios good biostatisticians in the market. So uh, uh, we will be relevant in the coming years. Uh, I, was, I would say we will see more like, you know, uh, machine learning and uh, AI in the field. Like biostatistician will start to you know, transition because they have a lot of shared skills with data scientists. They would be, many biostatisticians, in my opinion, will transition to these roles, like to do like, you know, uh, machine learning, AI stuff, but the demand will be there and the uh, profession will be uh, growing for sure. These are, you know, market figures. So, and if you go Google biostatistician job, you will find tons of job everywhere in the world. Uh, so it's a good, you know, career choice. So finally, for before ending the this section, uh, what advice do you do you have for for students and young professionals in the industry? Well, uh, as I said before, work on your hard skills. Of course, you need these to be a good biostatistician. Try to create a portfolio of projects. So if you say I am a biostatistician, what matters in the industry sorry about that what matters in the industry is evidence right so basically education is needed but you know it's not everything in life people will tell you okay what did you do i'm give, i want to make returns you're hired in an industry there are business goals and you know you uh, i want to feel comfortable that you've done something before that uh, makes me more confident you have something beyond a college degree or whatever uh, you know training courses you got so build a portfolio, like try to think what evidence I would give as a biostatistician or a statistician or data scientist. And of course that would show the experience uh, uh, you gained. 
So work on these hard skills, portfolio creation and all of that. Have a mentor, have someone guide you through this as an analyst or a biostatistician because all, and try to build a network. Networking guys is very important. So if you uh, are a great biostatistician or a statistician and you are isolated, so basically you will not get anywhere. Now, the soft skills, the presentation skills and the other skills like public speaking, you know, how to conduct yourself professionally, uh, uh, how to have a good package for employment, like good CV, good re uh, recommendation letter. Uh, I'm sorry, not good recommendation letter, statement of purpose or uh, cover letter. Uh, that's uh, also important. Language skills, guys communication skills, not only language skills, language and communication skills are key because people relate to you, you know, from how you speak, uh, can you communicate clearly? Can you negotiate for meaning? Can you deliver something meaningful? It's not only to be great in your own, you know, shell. No, you need to be able to communicate this to people so that's something you need to work on to like invest in this. So in the United States, there are courses for this, how to teach, how to present, how to like do good public speaking. So that's all important. Well, thank you, doctor, for the, this valuable advice. And uh, now we have uh, came to an end. And uh, by that, I want to thank you for accepting our invitation. And uh, we will pleasure to have you. Uh, at the Guru Talks. Yes, thank you so much. I, I'm greatly happy that I was able to maybe make some advice to young, like, you know, scientists or professionals through your platform, and uh, which I think is a very, very great uh, platform uh, to communicate with the, you know, uh, Arab professionals, young scientists, junior scientists, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Algarhi, uh, for having me here. Thank you, uh, Mariam, for the very nice and very like smooth moderation. Uh, I, I hope to see you in future lectures too. Thank you, Doctor, and we hope to see you in future maybe courses. And uh, by that, I would want to wish you all um, wait a week, a great week, and see you next Sunday in another Guru Talk. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.